Hey, Julian Krauss here, and this is the Canon RP. So let's have a closer look at the video quality of this camera and look specifically at things like Moray, rolling shutter and dynamic range. First, let's look at the image sharpness. The sharpness is heavily influenced by the sharpness setting in the picture profile. Here you can see a full HD shot with the neutral picture profile with the sharpness turned down all the way. This results in a very soft image with a little detail. Turning up the sharpness setting to 3 sharpens up the image noticeably and brings back some detail. With the sharpness setting to the maximum, which is 7, the image looks oversharpened. There is actually not much more detail visible than at level 3, but all the edges have much more contrast, which makes the image appear more detailed. So at zero sharpness, the full HD image of the EOS RP is very soft, and at level 7 it looks oversharpened. So level 3 or 4 seems to be the best compromise, which does not look too heavily processed and still shows some amount of detail. Now we change over to 4K. The EOS RP crops the image in 4K. As you can see here, this is the 1080p image and this is the 4K image. To keep the image comparable to the 1080p image, I compensated for the crop by zooming out the lens. Ok, here you can see the 4K image with the sharpness turned down all the way. There is already considerably more detail visible compared to the 1080p image, but it is still not tech sharp. Now with the sharpness turned to level 3, the detail rises notably. And for a 4K image, it shows a decent amount of detail. At the maximum sharpness setting, the image again looks a bit over sharpened, but it holds up better than the 1080p. Like in Full HD, at the minimum sharpness the 4K image is a little soft, and at the maximum sharpness it looks a bit over processed. The sharpness is set to 3, 4 or 5 seems to be the best balance. And here is the 1080p and the 4K image again side by side. Both have their sharpness set to level 3. You can clearly see that the 4K image resolves much more detail than the 1080p image. And one more thing you can see in this comparison is the moray in the 1080p material and the lack of it in the 4K video. When you look at a test chart, this becomes even more obvious. This leads me to believe that the EOS RP uses line skipping to achieve the full sensor readout in full HD. In 4K, on the other hand, it is very rare to encounter moray in real world footage and in my crude test chart there is no moray visible. Like I said, the RP crops the sensor significantly when shooting in 4K and I'm pretty sure that the readout is a cropped 1 to 1 pixel readout of the sensor. This would lead to the lower moray in 4K compared to the 1080p. Because we are already looking at test charts, let me quickly show you the image when the digital stabilization is activated. The digital stabilization crops the image slightly and I compensated for that by moving back the camera. As you can see, in full HD the digital stabilizer softens up the image a bit and introduces even more moray. There is also an enhanced mode which has an even tighter crop compared to the standard digital stabilizer. In full HD this results in a very soft image with a huge amount of moray. In 4K, the digital IS softens the image slightly and in the enhanced mode it decreases the image detail even further. So I personally wouldn't use the digital stabilizing options of the EOS RP, especially in Full HD it noticeably reduces the image quality and in 4K the additional crop on top of the already heavy 4K crop is simply too much. Now let's look at rolling shutter next. When I pan the camera like a madman in 1080p, the rolling shutter seems to be pretty low. Even though I move the camera left and right like I probably would never do in a real video shooting, the straight vertical lines only show little skewing. So it comes as no surprise that when I measured the sensor readout time, it is 12.4 milliseconds. For the 4K, that's a different story though. Again, you can see me whipping the camera around like crazy and this time the image shows much more skewing. This is also reflected in my measurement, which shows that the EOS RP needs 37.9 milliseconds to read out the whole image from the 4K crop region on the sensor. 
Now, I wouldn't say the image is unusable because of the rolling shutter, but when you handhold the camera, it can result in some visible wobble in the image. With the 1080p image, this wobble is pretty much unnoticeable. Now, let's have a look at the dynamic range of the EOS RP in video mode. The recorded dynamic range is influenced by the selected picture profile. Auto, standard, portrait, landscape and monochrome produce a very contrasty looking image and have the least dynamic range of all the picture profiles. Neutral, fine detail and faithful are slightly less contrasty but don't really offer a higher dynamic range. When you take the neutral picture profile and dial down the contrast all the way, you get an image which is even lower contrast and you actually gain a small amount of dynamic range. This is reflected in the gamma curve of the picture profiles. These profiles of course change much more than the gamma curve, they also affect the colors and sharpness of the image, but for now let's focus on the amount of dynamic range each picture profile provides. As I said, auto, standard portrait, landscape and monochrome have the same gamma curve, which you can see here. The gamma curve of neutral, fine detail and faithful show less of an S-shape in the highlight area, hence the lower contrast. But you don't really gain any dynamic range because both curves clip at the same point and the lower part of the curve is also identical. With the modified neutral picture profile, you can see that the curve straightens out even more and this time there is a some more highlight information brought back into range. This way you gain about a third to half a stop of dynamic range. Even though the neutral picture profile with the turned down contrast bumps up the dynamic range just slightly, it also lets you work with the image a little bit better in post. Because for the most part of the captured range, each stop gets recorded with roughly the same amount of data, you can more easily correct a over or under exposure compared to other standard picture profiles. On the other hand, you probably have to tweak it a bit in post to make it look good. Still, this seems to be the most dynamic range you can eke out of the EOS RP and I would say this provides a dynamic range of somewhere around 9 to 9.5 stops. Ok, on to the noise performance. In the menu of the EOS RP you can change the amount of noise reduction applied by the camera. This significantly affects the noise in the final image. Here you can see the effect of the internal noise reduction. The shots with the noise reduction turned on, even on the low level, show significantly less noise than the one where the noise reduction is turned off completely. Standard and high do a pretty good job of keeping down the noise, but high also lowers the sharpness of the whole image a bit. So in my opinion, standard yields the best balance between noise reduction and image sharpness. And that's why all the following ISO tests are shot with the standard noise reduction setting. Ok, let's start with ISO 100 in Full HD. As expected, this is a very clean looking image. ISO 200, not too much different. ISO 400, still very clean. Even ISO 800 is very good and to this point there is hardly any noise in the image. At ISO 1600, the noise becomes slightly visible in the darker areas of the image, but the overall image is still fine. ISO 3200 and here the noise is now clearly visible in the shadows, but the overall image is still decent. ISO 6400 brings a noticeable increase in noise and the shadows start to desaturate. ISO 12800 shows of course even more noise. And at ISO 25600 the image is really noisy. Now the same thing but in 4K. Like in Full HD, the ISO range between 100 and 800 is pretty much free of noise. At ISO 1600 the noise starts to creep into the shadows. ISO 3200 shows a bit more noise in the darker parts of the image, but the overall image still looks ok. ISO 6400 comes with an increase in noise and again the shadows start to desaturate a bit. And ISO 12800 is the maximum ISO in 4K and in my opinion this is not really usable anymore. So the noise performance of the Full HD in 4K is not too different, the amount of noise is roughly equal but the 4K noise is more like fine grain whereas the Full HD noise is a bit more blotchy. 
I personally would try to stay at or below ISO 3200 with the EOS RP. Maybe ISO 6400 if I had to. The last thing we're going to have a look at is the autofocus performance in 1080p and 4K. In this shot I used my Canon 35mm f2 IS USM with the adapter on the EOS RP. I shot this wide open to get the depth of field as shallow as possible to see how the AF can handle the situation. I used the face tracking AF and enabled the eye detection. As you can see the EOS RP tracks my face and my eye very nicely and the focus keeps up with my movements. The object tracking also works pretty well, though it sometimes drifts off when you move the camera too fast or the tracked object is close to another object which has the same color and luminance. And I find the point AF to be very reliable and fast in the 1080p mode. There is no real hunting and the AF just locks onto the place where you set your focus point. In 4K it's a different story and that's because the EOS RP switches from the dual pixel AF to a contrast based autofocus. As you can see the face and eye tracking still works fine, but the autofocus just cannot keep up with my movements. I am not moving a lot in this shot and yet it is hardly in focus. And that's the same for object tracking and point AF. The autofocus is way less responsive in 4K as it is in 1080p, it overshoots a lot and struggles to find proper focus. Ok, let's summarize my findings. In 1080p the image is not that sharp and more shows up quite frequently. The dynamic range is nothing to write home about, but I wouldn't say it's unusable either. Same with the noise performance, it's not outstanding, but it is fine for most cases. The rolling shutter performance is quite good and the autofocus is excellent. In 4K things are pretty much the other way around. The rolling shutter is quite bad, which can lead to wobbly shots when hand holding and with the autofocus it is pretty much impossible to focus on moving objects. The dynamic range is the same as for the 1080p setting and the noise performance is also virtually identical. Only the noise looks a bit finer compared to the 1080p. On the plus side, the 4K image shows a nice amount of detail and moray isn't a problem. Ok, I hope you liked this more detailed look at the video quality of the Canon RP. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more reviews on video gear. I will see you all in the next one.